Y'all giving me hearts already? You don't even know what I'm going to talk about. Hey. Oh, it's super dark in here. Hey, guys. Hey, Kari. <laughs> no, it's going to be great. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, Jen. So, I'm not going to be long because I'm literally sitting um, in the McDonald's parking lot. Horrible. I'm starving. So, um, oh, this little car next to me is like lighting up. So, um, I just came back from this event. It was so awesome. Hi. Oh, hey. How are you? I haven't seen you since the cruise. Have I seen you since the cruise? I don't think I've seen you since the cruise. Thank you. So, um, one of um, Alina's pro fights had um, Hi from Ohio. Are you in D.C.? Or were you in the Carolinas? I'm going to be in D.C. next weekend for the One Team, One Mission. Hey, Courtney. So, I lost my train of thought already. Oh, okay, South Carolina, I thought so. <gasps> You're going to be in D.C.? Ah! Okay, I'm about to send you a message in the Wild TBG group. Um, okay, so, oh my God, that just made me so excited. Get off here, talking about woo-woo. Okay, so I, um, oh my God, Jen, I'm so excited. Okay focus. I'm not reading y'all's comments. So, came from this event. It was called Fearless Discussions. I don't know if you guys have heard of Adrienne Simone. Um, it's Alina's line sister. Based, uh, profile. She's basically like a serial entrepreneur. She was like making six figures back in college. She has like um, she's always had like her own boutique and all this other stuff. And um, Anyway, she wanted to have this th thing called like, Fearless Discussions where women get together. And like, and it's not just women, but tonight is women. Get together and um, like encourage each other or whatever. So, Megan Good's sister flew in from Cali. I guess she's doing a play here in Atlanta tomorrow and this weekend or something. So, it, she was very, oh my gosh, she was so good. Of course, Arian spoke. Another lady, Latia, I forget her name, that goes to the Dream Center here, that goes to her church, um, that goes to Arian's church was there. And it was just so amazing. It was so powerful, so uplifting, blah, 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 blah. And there was a lot of things that were said. I think I, not tweeted, I don't tweet anymore, but um, wrote a couple of the things on Facebook that they said. And the one that just like really, really, really stuck out to me was, don't give people your cup. We were talking about, you know, loving your neighbor as yourself and giving of yourself and giving to other people, um, which is absolutely essential um, and kind of your own personal, like, growth and development and just coming into loving yourself or whatever is to really start giving to others. Um, and I think a lot of times in that we can get caught up into, like, having to give so much into other people that we, um, I look like an avatar. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Oh, it has a heart at the end of it. Cute eyes at the end. So I'm going to guess that means that's cute. So, um, anyway, so we can be, you know, trying to do so much good sometimes or pouring to other people sometimes that we give too much and I know I'm like super 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 guilty of that or I feel guilty if I have to tell somebody no and when I tell y'all I almost started boohooing because she kind of um really no they're not who is that anyway um this is why I can't look at the comments let me just finish my thoughts and not look so basically I just feel like a lot of times I feel guilty when I have to tell people no or people may ask for certain help and I'm like I, I can't I can't help you um, and I can't do you can't be everything to everybody um, oh do I have my thing here we were at um, in Dallas it works you Dallas and our CEO said you can do 
anything, but you can't do everything. And that just really, really struck me because my whole life I felt like I had to do everything. And you're going to burn yourself out that way. And it was kind of the same thing today. And when she said this one line, it just like struck me to my core. And she said, the Bible says that your cup runneth over. Stop giving people your cup. You can't give people everything. You can't give people the very thing that's supposed to hold everything that God has for you. Like your cup runneth over the overflow of what you have, the extra that you have to give, your extra time, your extra energy, your extra emotion, your extra wisdom. That is what you can give to other people. You can't give people your cup. If you have your cup, if you give people your cup, you have nothing. And it just... I don't know, maybe that's like not profound to y'all. Maybe you've never felt like you were giving your entire cup. I hate Periscope. I'm going to turn this off because I always start crying on Periscope. Um, maybe you never felt like you were giving your entire cup to someone. But like, it's not a good feeling. Like, that is not helping people. That is not... Um, getting them to a place that that they need to be um exactly where there's nothing left for you and I think we feel guilty um that there's not anything that that we I can't even talk it's, it is draining guilty we've all been there so I'm sure that's probably why I struck a chord you know in me but you can't give people your cup and frankly if they mad that you can't give them your cup, then you can walk out of my life and I will keep my cup, you know, and exactly. And then it's not appreciated. They mad. You should have gave me your cup. Well, if you give me your cup, God going to give you another cup. Wait, what? Like, no, like he gave me a cup and I'm supposed to give out of the abundance of what he's given me. And yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I already put it on there, Rick. It was just crazy. It just hit me so, so much. And I know you're dealing with a lot, too. Like, you just, it's hard to say no. It's so hard to say no. Um, even in this, and it's not even just all about this business. It's hard to say no, especially in this business. You know, I've had people curse me out of my inbox before for not helping them. And, you know, I thought this was one team, one mission. And why, you know why you won't help me and this this and that like I have to give for my overflow you know what I mean I don't have to explain everything to everybody like I don't even have time to pee most days you know what I mean like I can't give everything to everybody you know I have people just wanting so much and I'm sure everybody on here on this scope feels the same way like no I can't stop what I'm doing to have a 45 minute training call with you and I literally have never met you in my life and you're not on my team. I feel really guilty about that. But like, not only is that not selfish, I love what Renessa posted yesterday. If you're not on my team, it's not that I don't want to help you. I get on scopes. I do what I can to pour out to everybody. But it's like, no, the 45 minutes that I'm going to train you and you're not even on my team, that's 45 minutes that I could have spent with somebody that did invest with me because they did want my time. And they specifically came to me to help them get where they wanted to be in their business or their, you know, whatever. And this is, of course, I know all my It Works followers are on here. So that's why I'm specifically talking about It Works. But it's the same thing in your family, in your business, in your relationships. Like you have to give of yourself after you've been filled up. If your cup is not full, you don't have anything to give. And what you are giving, that's when it becomes a drain. You're, it's draining from what was meant for you. So um, just don't don't feel bad. Yes, they definitely need to do the work. I'm not even going to harp on all of that. But I just kind of wanted to give everybody a tangible example of people feeling like you have to do this. Yes, fill me up until I overflow. Like if I'm, I want to run over, I definitely want to run over because I want to be able to run over enough to where it trickles on to other people and it's able to help them. But if I'm not filled up and running over, I'm still depleted at the end of the day. I need to be filled up enough to give up my overflow and then still be able to go to bed, not drain, go to bed, not crying or go to bed, not whatever, like at the end of the day, wherever you are in your situation, you can't give more than you 
more than you've been filled up. You cannot do that. Um, you're not supposed to ever give and then be depleted. You know, that's why you're supposed to pour into yourself. Um, right now, I kind of feel crazy. My, both my phones have been going ham and I have not looked at them for, you know, a couple of hours. I know my team is probably like, what the heck? Like, I just need to go be filled up tonight. And I'm probably not going to answer any more calls or text messages. And I'm about to go to sleep. And I'm probably not going to wash this makeup off my face. I'm about to go hop in the bed because I'm tired. Um, but I really did want to share this because I just felt like it was kind of too good not to share from what she said. Because I've never, um, I've never heard that. And I'm a church kid, so I feel like I've heard everything. I've never heard somebody say, keep your cup. So if you're on this tonight, you keep your cup and then you keep your cup filled up. Um, and then from there, then you go and fill up somebody else, you know, from, from your abundance. I'm oh, sorry. They all just kind of camp at the same second. Yeah. Keep your cup. I think I'm about to start hashtagging that and just, I'm probably going to go write it on my mirror because it's something that I definitely battle with as a constant reminder of love you too, boo. You got to keep your cup, keep your, and, and, and again, don't just keep your cup, keep your cup filled up. You know, if that means getting up every morning and getting in the word, if that means turning your phone off, if that means saying no and not explaining yourself, um, yeah, go back and watch the beginning. Basically, keep your cup. Don't give more than what you um, are able to. Don't, you know, you're supposed to give out of the, your abundance. That's why God has called us to um, abundant life. Um, we definitely should get some shirts made. Keep your cup. I might start a little something with that. But um, you're supposed to give out of your abundance. And that's another reason why we're supposed to be living an abundant life. Like, why would we be broke? I'm not... If you if you are, in, in a very literal sense, if you have $100 to... <laughs> shut up. If you have $100 to your name and somebody in your life, you know, a, a mom, a dad, sister, brother, cousin needs it. I'm not telling you not to go give it, you know, give and it will be given back to you, all of that. But at the same time, you have to also use wisdom. If that's your last hundred dollars and you don't have gas and you have four more days until the 15th and you got to get groceries, guess what? That hundred dollars is your cup. Because guess what? Who's going to fill up your cup when you give your hundred dollars that was in your cup? Like, you have to use wisdom, you know what I mean? And I feel like you can be in a... And I'll use this example today because I'm sure it's like... It was crazy. Some of y'all probably saw it if you were in the Diamonds and Above group. I had a young lady in my inbox today and she was just like, I really need help with my wedding and I would really, you know, appreciate it. I'm probably not supposed to ask for this, but I would really, you know, like for you to help me pay off the remaining balance of my wedding that's in on April 16th. And I was like who are you? Like, I've literally never talked to this person in my life. And of course, my initial reaction was that it made me mad. But yeah. But I was just like, silently, like as after I responded to her, I kind of felt guilty for a second because I was like, yeah, girl, remaining balance. Yeah. When I say I've never met this person in my life, <laughs> And I was just like, then I felt guilty, like, God, well, was that an opportunity? Like, was I supposed to give her something or like $50 or $100? But it was like, no, Fallon, this is your cup. And I give all the time. I'm giving all the time. I'm giving when people don't even know I'm giving. You know, I'm doing what I can for people when don't, nobody know what I'm doing. And it's just like, no, I don't have to give from this cup because you probably mismanaged and misappropriated the funds that God gave you in your cup. Like, this is my cup that I worked really hard for. And if I have extra and a whole bunch of overflow, then yeah, I can help you. But even then, don't come swoop in. Like, let's be for real. So I guess that's a more practical example of use wisdom. Like, don't feel like, oh, God has blessed me and I have this and this overflow and I've got to do X, Y, Z. You don't have to do anything. You know, pray about it, be wise, seek wisdom and all that. But your cup is your cup for a reason. And I think that um, society teaches us that because society is typically so self-centered, um, yeah, I mean, people really don't deserve your overflow. I, I mean, I I agree. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm not going to talk about what I was about to say. Dang it, now I lost my train of thought. 
Anyway, I guess I'm kind of being redundant right now. But anyway, that just really blessed me because... Oh, I know what I was going to say. Society is definitely... Um, because society is selfish right now, uh, everything is about you and do what you want to do. I think that people... I think that we're because everything is really selfish and self-centered we are kind of trained or whatever now there's a big focus on giving and giving back or whatever which is great but like at the end of the day just because everything else is selfish doesn't mean that I have to go overboard to prove that I'm not being selfish you know just because everyone else is in the world is focused on self doesn't mean that I have to go above and beyond to prove that I'm not being selfish you know what I mean so anyway at the end of the day be a good steward over you know your finances be a good steward over what God has given you and continue to fill yourself up even not just spiritually and everything else but even financially you know if God it's just like the parable of, ta of the talents if God gave you five you know and you want to go or one and then you go bury it and you don't do anything with it and make it make more money for you like yeah they definitely saw that bonus which is crazy but the, the crazy thing is they were a distributor i was like girl if you don't get out here and go sell some wraps between now and the 16th i don't know what to tell you shawty but um anywho i lost my train of thought again so anyway i hope it was kind of helpful i just really wanted to share that because um i battle with that a lot a lot a lot especially as god blesses you i don't ever want to feel like i didn't do what god was telling me to do with with money or like helping other people but at the end of the day you have to be a good steward over what he's giving you and go and reinvest you know go and keep your cup keep your cup filling up because honestly the more you keep your cup and the more you keep it full the more you will be the more you will be able to give if i went would go and get that girl 200 or 500 or two thousand dollars you know on her wedding to pay off whatever remaining balance that she had okay then that's two thousand dollars that i could have reinvested into some stocks or some mutual funds or you know into my own nonprofit or own dreams and visions that god has given me that i want to fulfill oh thank you um that i want to fulfill and get done so um you know i'm not going to anybody i'm not going to anybody I'm not going to my parents I'm not going to anybody asking them for anything I get my butt up and work every day you know every day because that's what you do when you're grown and you're adulting okay you get up and you work and it's not that people can't help you and it's not that you cannot ask for help but do not come ask me to pay for your wedding baby I'm trying to save for mine how about that so at the end of the day keep your cup keep your cup full be smart when you do choose to share um, you know what you have from your cup what you have from your overflow and make sure that you're in a position where you are overflowing you know in, in order to be overflowing you might need to keep what you have in your cup if you're always giving what you have in your cup you're not going to have an overflow ever to give from so um, yeah adulting is very hard I'm actually going to say that adulting sucks <laughs> but um, anywho I just I just really wanted to share that because it was on my heart and I couldn't I literally couldn't even get it out of my brain ever since I left the event like they had some other good nuggets what else did they say um I, I was about to say I tweeted I tweeted something else you're welcome I'm about to graduate and I'm not looking forward to adulting yeah absolutely adulting is not fun um I would much rather go back to my college days but I will say this what's fun about adulting is when you do get to a place where um god has provided and you're not like struggling and stressed then adulting kind of becomes fun i think the reason why most most of us don't like to adult is because most adults are struggling and stressed um so if you're in a point if you're at a point where you're adulting and not struggling and stressed it's great um right now i'm not struggling and stressed but i'm definitely I've been adulting with these taxes for three days and I'm a CPA and I'm just like this is for the birds like I'm never doing this again I'm paying somebody next year so adulting can come in many forms I hate adulting and going to the grocery store who got time for that um, I hate adulting and doing a lot of things but now this has nothing to do with keeping your cup full so anyway if that's what you were here for I guess I'm done talking about that I was trying to think of something else what else did I post um, 
that they said that was really good. A lot of y'all liked it, but I already forgot what I put. Let me see. Well, I'm at the stop sign because y'all be worried about my driving. Ooh, this was another good one. You cannot live your life according to someone else's grace. And I think I've heard that before. And, um, no, I was at a stop sign. Um, I was trying to find the quote. I'm literally right around the corner from my house. Um, you can't live your life according to someone else's grace. And I've heard that before, like, in a different way. And it just hit me again. And the, the example that they used, it was a very, like, raw, open discussion. Um, but they were talking about, you know, you'll, you cannot... Will she do the event in other states? She is from Detroit. She said they've had one there. We're going to be having another one. I think she said March 11th or March 16th. It's March of, May 11th. May 11th. So I was thinking, oh, no, that's right after my nephew's birthday. So I hope I'm home. But May 11th, um, it'll be another one here. It's actually going to be with Monietta Shaw. Um, I think most of y'all probably know she was engaged to Neo and all of that. So um, anyway, the next one will be with her. But it says you cannot live your life according to someone else's grace. And... You know, you can't be the person that says, oh, well, so-and-so is out here sleeping around with every time Dick and Harry and don't get pregnant, don't get no STD. So that's how I'm going to live my life. Just because that's the grace that God has placed on that person in their life, you don't know why. You could be the person that goes out here and does it one time and gets a baby and an STD. You know, so do not live your life according to someone else's grace because your grace is not the same. You know, I've always been the scary kid. I've always been the preacher's kid that knew I couldn't do what everybody else did because frankly, um, Oprah says it this way, you, you know, when you know better, you do better. You're held to a higher standard when you know better. You know, that person that may be out there sleeping around with 50 million people, probably, I'm not going to say probably, maybe they've experienced something where their father isn't in their life or they're having self-esteem issues or whatever. That's not my lot. So I can't be out here. God has probably extended an extra measure of grace to that person based on their life circumstances. So don't measure, um, yeah, you can't live your life according to somebody else's grace. So I thought that was very, very, very good. And another really good reminder is basically stop measuring yourself against other people as well. Like, I know Ash Elise. Um, hey, Ash, she just got pink hair. It's really cute. I just saw it on Facebook. Gorgeous. Anyway, she um, has a, a group, a nonprofit, whatever, called Be The Standard. Like, other people are not the standard. <laughs> that is not the standard. That is not the standard. Yeah, that's my boo-boo. She's so sweet. Ash for Prez. Am I coming to Michigan? Nope. <laughs> it's cold. I heard it was snowing up there somewhere. Negative. But I hope y'all go to one team, one mission, Grand Rapids. Is it tomorrow? I have some people on my team in Grand Rapids, so I was telling them they need to get there. Um. Anyway, yeah, don't live your life according to other people's standards of grace um, that have been set for them because you'll be the one to say... Well, she did this. I'm going to go out and do that. Uh, no, because you're going to be the one to get caught. I knew a bunch of my friends that were doing crazy stuff. Not that I didn't do crazy stuff. So let me be the first one to say. Fallon has not been there, done that. But um, there's a lot of people that did a lot of other things that I just, I just knew. Like, there was no point in me. There was no reason in me even faking the phone and, like, trying to act like I was going to maybe even get away with it for, like, two seconds. Because I already knew. I'm, I'm going to be too scared. I'm going to start crying. I'm going to come in the house shaking. Something going to give it away. I'm going to have something left on my car from me being somewhere that I wasn't supposed to be. Just, you know, don't put yourself in a situation <laughs> where you're going to get caught up, basically. Um, so I thought that was really good. Those are the only two things that I think I tweeted slash wrote on Facebook or whatever about. I'm about to pass up my house. I do this every time. Y'all, I've been living here almost four years. I always pass up my house. All of, I always can't see my garage. Anyway, the event was amazing. I definitely will be going back to more fearless discussions with Erin and Simone. Um, I really, really like Megan. Yeah, the Holy Ghost would definitely tell my daddy. I'm not even like scared of my daddy because my daddy was like the nice one. Like even when he would find out about all the stuff that I did because I was crazy. Like my sisters were definitely worse than me. <laughs> And, like, my parents definitely admit it now. They're like, yeah, you really weren't the bad child. I'm like, yeah, I told you. But um, I definitely, definitely, definitely had my share. But, like, my daddy was good. And I'm not talking about, like, 
oh, sneaking out the house or coming in late. Thank you. Um, I'm talking about like for real stuff, like really, really, like really, really bad stuff that my parents found out about, you know, like grown people stuff. Like, and I have a really good relationship with my parents. So, you know, some of the stuff that I went through that most people probably wouldn't tell their parents, like they definitely know about. And I just remember like one situation, I could talk about this now without crying, but one situation, I just knew my dad was going to be like, not even disown me, but he's, I mean, and for y'all that don't know, my dad's a pastor or whatever. And I will never forget the grace that he extended to me in that situation. It wasn't even grace that needed to be extended. Like I was beyond grown. I'm beyond grown. I mean, I was like, I think I was already out of grad school or whatever. Yeah, I was out of grad school or finishing up grad school. And he found out and he didn't call and like chastise me. He And for y'all to know, he didn't send me a scripture. He just called and said, how do you feel? Are you all right? And that was that. Literally the end of it. He's like, what do you need? Do you want me to come down there? And that was that. And we've never talked about it since. And that for me, I don't know if y'all saw me like break down <laughs> in Tampa. Um, I told y'all I was listening to that song, Good Good Father. And I've had, I do, I have a really, 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 really good earthly father. And I think that's part of the reason why that song broke me down so much is because, um, it definitely, I can understand, um, what the love of our heavenly father is really like because of the example that my dad has set. And just that example, just that one situation alone where, you know, he really extended that kind of grace to me and just was a, a dad you know I was just like oh okay like this is what daddies do so anyway I guess that kind of goes back to the extension of grace you know um you never want to oh uh, I do I really do he's still working on me in a whole lot of areas but I really do um but I just feel like um, he's a really, really good example of, of God extending grace. And God is going to continue to extend grace to his children. I mean, think about it, I don't have any kids, but I just know how many times I've messed up, how many times. Even my little brothers and little sisters, like, I've all, I'm the oldest, so I've always felt like a mama or a daddy. And it's like, you just be like, oh, whatever. You know, I love you. Just get out of here. Don't do that again. And so we feel like that about, you know our earthly kids why would God not feel like that about us but at the same time you don't want to abuse his grace so um anyway now I'm talking about other stuff that doesn't really matter and it's 11 45 on the dot and I'm going to sleep so anyway don't live your life according to someone else's measure of grace and keep your cup keep your own cup keep your cup full and only give out of your overflow of um what you have to give. Love you too, Dee Dee. All right, y'all, I'm out.